Church family, I want to take a few moments uh, today and just try and shape the way that we are understanding the coronavirus, and in particular, our uh, responsibility, but also our privilege, the privilege that we as the people of God have during this time. <clears throat> the privilege we have and the responsibility is that we get to be the people of God, that we are the people of God and we get to act like it. Now, our community uh, is in a unique time. Isolation is becoming the norm. Cultural events are being discontinued. Uh, community events, uh, there's not many to engage in. So that per puts people in a position where they're asking questions they don't typically ask. Uh, and realities, they're beginning to feel and know realities they don't typically uh, experience. People are beginning to understand more deeply the f how fragile life really is, how life goes in a vapor. We're beginning to understand how little we really know uh, and how weak we really are. Well, that is a ripe, uh, ripe soil for the sake of the gospel. So we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity in the midst of uh, this situation to enrich God's glory. And that's what I want to talk about uh, in the next few minutes. So first of all, brothers and sisters, if, if we, uh, if we want to seize this opportunity well, one thing we could do is we could preach the gospel. Now we want to be aware that uh, engaging with people, people are fearful. So we want to do this wisely. We want to ha have ha sanitized hands and clearly taking care of our hygiene. And we want to uh, have proper spacing between people. But we want to proclaim the gospel. People who are understanding that life is fragile and that they don't know when death's coming uh, uh, <clears throat> creates an environment where the gospel can spread. So when we proclaim the gospel that, that although, although we are sinners, Christ died for sinners and took the power of death and broke it so that death has no victory. When we proclaim that to a people who are fearful and understanding how fragile life really is, uh, we have a, a unique uh, opportunity for the gospel to spread. That is ground where the gospel can really spread. So we need to proclaim the gospel. So when, as we are the church in this trying time, let's be a church who preaches the gospel. Let's also be a church that's generous. If you remember in our Genesis 14 sermon, we, we talked about how Abraham embodied righteousness. And that led Melchizedek to bless God. As we embody righteousness in a fearful time by means of being generous, those around us will bless God. So first of all, we need to prioritize our church family. If you're in our church family and you have needs, perhaps you're unable to get a prescription drug or go to the grocery store, or perhaps you're an hourly employee and you're suffering financial difficulties, we want you and we, we ask you to reach out to our church. Reach out to Joan. She will triage the needs of our church and make sure that we can meet as many needs and to the greatest capacity we can during this trying time. We want to be a church that cares for one another for as we do it. We will see more clearly the God who's cared for us, and we will bless our God more deeply. That will enrich his reputation. But we also have to have an eye to non-Christians. Now, our church has limited resources, but uh, you might have some resources. So if you come across non-Christian family members, friends, or neighbors who are in need, perhaps they run out of toilet paper, or perhaps they run out of milk, and you have extra milk, I would ask you to be generous for the sake of the gospel. For when our non-Christian family members and friends and neighbors see a church that's generous in the midst of fear, they will see a God who is worthy of worship. So we can proclaim the gospel and we can be generous. A third way um, is we could pray. We need to be praying to the God who has control over this virus. We need to be praying that God would reap and would allow us to reap a harvest through this difficult season. Let's be fervent in prayer. And finally, there's other reasons, but here's one more. Let's invite people to church. You see, that seems a bit counterintuitive and uh, because of our, our society right now. Um, but in the midst of a scary situation, people need community. They're not able to turn to the community of this world, but still smaller churches like ours are still able to meet wisely. Our government has still still is still permitting and suggesting that churches under 250 can meet, that gives small churches a unique opportunity. A unique opportunity uh, in wisdom and with, again, 
sanitized hands, and proper precautions to invite non-Christians to church. As we invite non-Christians to church, they are going to be thriving. They're going to be thirsty for community. If we invite them to our church and they see the genuineness of our worship and they see the power of the gospel, we proclaim God very well. He might save many through this time. He might save people who are lacking other community uh, outreach and he might bring them into our church and save them. You see, um, we, if we can meet wisely and our government thinks we can, and if we have enough hand sanitizer and Lysol wipes, uh, we want to meet wisely. Now, those who are in at-risk categories are caring for those who are at risk. We are asking you to stay home. But if you are healthy and you are meeting together, and if you have non-Christian friends who are healthy and willing to meet, this might be an opportunity for the gospel to really spread as uh, non-Christians who are thirsty for community see it in the church of Jesus Christ. Now, we want to make you aware of one resource. We're starting an 11th Street blog. Now, our blog will be sent out on our emails, will be uh, shared on our social media platforms, and finally, will can be found on our website. Our hope is to give several resources uh, a week about articles, videos, and opportunities for discussions to be had uh, on this uh, on this blog, and we're hope, just hoping to equip our church to be faithful in the midst of a fearful situation. So I'd recommend that you uh, look at this blog, that you read these resources, you watch these videos, and share them uh, with, with your friends. We want to equip the church to be faithful uh, during this trying time. Brothers and sisters, I am excited to listen to uh, Pastor Joe as he preaches the Word of God today. So now let's listen in expectation as we hear from the Word of our God.